Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video. Today we are going to talk about how to bypass root detection on Android applications. So um, this method is going to require us a little bit of JavaScript knowledge, but it is very, very limited uh, because we are going to co code uh, a bypass ourselves for this application and we are not going to rely on online tools. We're just going to do some static analysis on how the application imp implements root detection and then we are going to bypass it. So this is the application that I'm talking about and this is an application from ACTF. So if I were to go ahead and uh, click on this application, we would only see a blank screen and nothing else is showing up. Um, so we might think that the application is broken or something, but later on we're gonna realize that there is a root detection being implemented here. So I'm just gonna close this for now. Um, and uh, just a little bit of like a, a heads up, uh, I'm using a Magisk module to connect to my PC, which is called Magisk Frida, and uh, it is just activated and it is the same thing as a Frida server, uh, which I have shown in the previous videos. So if I go, go ahead, go to my terminal and type in Frida-ps, we would see with dash uppercase U for USB, we would see that our uh, Frida is detecting our router device. So, uh, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is just open up this timer application in Jadex and look at the source code. So Jadex-GUI and then timer.ppk, right? And then we are going to open this application. Let's wait for it to load. I'm just gonna move it over here. Um, maybe over here, all right. And then we can see that the application has loaded. So I'm uh, the first thing that I always like doing is checking the manifest file. So let's click on the Android manifest.xml. And I'm not going to show you uh, the wall solution to the CTF because this is very long um, and it is very difficult. I'm just gonna show you the part where we uh, disable uh, like bypass the root detection for the application. So we can, uh, check for, for things like minimum SDK version um, and it is 24 so it is going to work for our device because it is a little bit higher than 24. So let's just scroll through that uh, but I'm not gonna do that in this video because we are only focusing on the root bypass. So what I'm gonna do is click on this home button here to go to the main activity. Um, and we are now in the main activity. If you wanna uh, figure out where exactly it is on the file system, you can just right click here, copy name, and then I'm just gonna open anything here and just paste it so we can see com.ctf.timer.timer uh, activity. So if we were to go to the source code and then click on com, CTF timer, and we can see that there is this timer activity, which is our main activity. So we can read through the source code, but uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do here is open up this application again and just look at the logs that the application is producing. Because uh, as of now, we don't know why it is not working on our mobile device. It could be uh, various reasons, so I'm just gonna open it right now and go to my log cat. And we can see that there are a lot of logs being spit out here. I'm just gonna close the application right now and I'm gonna try to filter and uh, look for stuff that might be interfering with our launch of this application. So uh, I will type in uh, ctf.timer, for example, let's see. And we can uh, see from the, uh, like we can see that there is this line uh, being shown on the errors uh, and it's saying that root beer and uh, uh, that the root, uh, root management app detected. So this means that uh, root bear, a uh, like a tool to detect uh, root root on the mobile application uh, on mobile devices, is being implemented in, in this application. Let's go back to the source code of the application and then just Control Shift plus F to search for the entire uh, like for the from for all files here and then uh, select everything class method field resource and comments and I'm gonna search for root beer how, how does it spell um, root beer with double e like that and then we can see all of the implement implementation or implementations of uh, root beer 
So uh, let me just look at the root bear implementa implementation in the timer activity. So I'm just gonna double click on this one and then scroll down. I'm just gonna search for root. Let's see, and we can see this line here. If new root bear, uh, a timer activity is rooted, then system is exit. So if a root has been detected from this root bear function, and to look at the function, we can control click on it, and it is going to bring us to this root bear package that was imp uh, imported to our timer activity here. So we could s read through that, but it is open source, and uh, we can go to root bear GitHub like that and uh, we can click on it and it is actually a large uh, a large project so you are probably not going to read th through all of it and find like zero days on it or anything like that so we can just try to bypass it on our timer activity so it is uh, calling this root bear function and if the device is rooted then we are going to exit but before that before uh like uh, creating our like uh, our own bypass for this, uh, we are going to try to run a uh, Frida anti-root or any Frida project that is bypassing root, and we will see that it is not going to work. So let me just show you that. I'm just gonna copy this Frida and anti-root uh, code share and just paste it in my terminal here, and then dash u for USB and dash f com dot ctf dot timer. And then let's just click on enter and we will see what will happen. Let's go back to our device. We can see that the application has launched, but it hasn't uh, been bypassed. We can still see that there is root management app detected here. If I'm going to close it and go back, we can see that, uh, for, for example, this script has tried a lot, a lot of different, uh, bypasses for a uh, root, but it hasn't ma managed to bypass it. And on those occasions, you will want to develop a uh, proof of concept exploit, proof of concept like uh, bypass for root of, uh, by yourself. All right, so let me just go back to the application here, and then uh, I'm gonna not open it. I'm just gonna go to Jadex, and we are gonna uh, do something which is called, uh, we are going to create and bypass with JavaScript for Frida. To do that, I'm gonna just create a new file, which is going to be called um, Frida root bypass .javascript, like that. And we're going to uh, create our own bypass. To find, uh, to find uh, like all of the documentation for Frida, you can go ahead and go to Frida website, like that, frida.re here and then go to docs and we can see that there is a lot of different uh, documentation which we can uh, reference to to create our bypass. Um, I'm not gonna read through uh, everything here because I already know how everything works here. So let me just go to back to my new Vim uh, project here and let me create a new bypass for the for the root uh, implementation for this application. Uh, first of all, uh, let's let me just explain to you how this uh, how this bypass not bypass but how this function works. So it is going to call a new function root beer, and it is going to check if uh, the root is uh, if device is rooted, right? So uh, and this is going to return true or false based on what uh, it finds on the device. So if it is going to return true, then we are going to exit. If it is going to return false, then we are going to proceed without exiting and successfully open the application. So what we need to do is just uh, put in this if statement uh, uh, false or we need to make that root beer act this function uh, needs to return false. Uh, I hope that makes sense. So let me just go back here and we are going to start creating our bypass. So first of all we have to do uh, java.perform because we're going to perform a function here and then function like that and then uh, I believe this is the syntax 
or no, like this. And we, we are now in java.perform function. So the first thing that we need is to get this, this package of root beer. So let's see how the timer activity imports root beer and we can see it right here. So import com scotty app root beer root beer like that. So we can just copy this uh, line of code and just go back to our editor and then we are going to create a new constant which is going to be root beer root beer and then is going to be equal java.use and we are going to use this root beer package. So now we are using this root beer package. The, f the next thing that we will do is go down here and try to understand how this uh, how this if statement is working. So, so we can see that this if statement is first of all creating a new object, uh, which is calling this class root beer. We can see it uh, over here in this root beer package. And then it is calling the is rooted function here. So what we will need to do is check when this root beer is rooted uh, function is being called. And immediately when it is called, we are going to say uh, we, we are going to make this is rooted function return false. So to do that, let's type in root beer for root beer for the uh, class name, then uh, implementation, I believe. Implementation dot. Uh, oh no, we are going to, first of all, I messed up everything. So let me just um, like that. And then root beer dot is rooted dot implementation like that and then is going to be equal to function so we are going to call this function here and when this function is called uh we are going to return false so let me just i i'm going to also console.log uh by passing root detection like that and then uh, return false because we need to return false for this um i'm not sure i think we need for javascript these uh semicolons and then exit from this file here and now let's try to to see if uh, our root bypass works so in theory when we are going to launch this application with frida and this uh, module loaded, uh, uh, with this file loaded, we will we should theoretically see that is it is going to load because our root detection, uh, our root bypass script is going to return false for this is rooted function, and it is going to make it that the system is not going to exit. So let's try to load that. So let's do frida dash u. Uh, for USB dash f com dot ctf dot timer dash l uh, frida root bypass dot javascript. Let me go switch it to uh, this uh, this workstation and then let me click on enter and let's see if it works. It is saying uh, spawning com ctf timer and we can see that it successfully bypassed the root detection. So we can see that we are now on this timer activity here and it says bypassing root detection here as we have console logged in our Frida root bypass.javascript file. So we have successfully bypassed root. Um, with this method you can not only bypass root, you can also bypass SSL pinning and other things like that um, because uh, well, you, you can just modify functions. So if you find a function which is calling, for example, new dot uh, bypass SSL pinning, uh, not bypass, implement SSL pinning, for example. And if it is pinned, then system.exit. If you find something like that, you can also return false for that is, uh, if is uh, like SSL pinning thing. So you can bypass a lot of stuff like that and you can modify functions and uh, uh, everything and methods so i hope you enjoyed this video uh and i will see you in the next one goodbye